In solving polynomial equations part one, we're going to talk about how we solve these polynomial equations and the process is similar to the one we used with quadratics. We're just going to do problems with higher order polynomials. First, make sure whatever equation you're working with is equal to zero. We had to do the exact same thing with quadratics. Then we're going to factor and use the zero product property or if you're not feeling comfortable with factoring, we can utilize the graphing calculator to help us find the zeros the same way we did with quadratics. However, I am going to ask you to find the solutions on the calculator and work backwards to put the equation in factored form because being able to factor polynomials is going to help us with a future topic in this class. So I'm going to start by solving this algebraically, not with the graphing calculator. In order to solve 2x cubed minus 5x squared is equal to 3x, first I'm going to make the equation equal to 0. After I do that, in order to continue factoring, I need to put this, I, or I need to find the greatest common factor if it has one. Always look for a greatest common factor first. The only thing these three terms share in common is an x, so I'm going to factor out an x. I'm going to take an x away from each term. All right, so one of the factors is x. To determine the other two factors, uh, we have one of two ways of doing it. I'm going to do it the long way right now, which is we would look for the two numbers that multiply together to give us negative 6, but when I add them, give me negative 5. Well, you can write out all your pairs of numbers that multiply to give you negative 6, or, let's make sure I do this right, or you can just determine it in your head. A lot of you can just do this part in your head. You figure out real fast it's 1 and negative 6. So now, I write it as 2x squared plus x minus 6x minus 3, because what we do is we rewrite the middle term as the sum of the two factors we just found. And then we're going to use a process called factor by grouping. The x we took out at the beginning of the problem, it's going to be there at the end of the problem, so you just ignore it for a minute. We group the first two terms together. Here, I'll do this. I'll put brackets here. And then we group the next two terms together. And now we factor again. The first group, I can factor out an x, and I'm left with 2x plus 1. In order for factor by grouping to work, whatever you factor out of the second group better, be, better give you a remainder of 2x plus 1. Well, since they're both negative, I'm going to factor out negative greatest common factor, which happens to be 3. When I divide them both by negative 3, I'm left with 2x plus 1. Now, 2x plus 1 is one of the factors, and the other factor is x minus 3. So that's my factored form. The book skips this. It assumes you know how to factor trinomials where the leading coefficient is not 1. I do not assume that. I use the zero product property. Notice that x at the beginning also gets set equal to zero. People have been forgetting that. Don't forget that. So this is one of the solutions. Negative one half is one of the solutions. And three is one of the solutions. What if I wanted to do this on my graphing calculator instead? Remember when you go and put this in your calculator, put your polynomial in y1 equals and make sure y2 equals 0 because instead of finding the zeros, we're going to find the point of intersection of the graph and the x-axis. Now here's the graph and I don't know if you can, can tell, but you see the little pixels on the graph? They start to come above the x-axis and then they go back down. Well, the graph hits at three locations. Sometimes you can see the locations, like I'm pretty sure that looks like it's at three. And I'm pretty sure that one's at zero. It's just this one over here looks like it may be 
at something else, some decimal value. Well, that's where we can use the intersect function. So do your second trace 5, enter, 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 and you should find out that one of the points of intersection, I think the first one just gives you 0 because it's closest to 0. Then do second trace 5, enter, 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 or second trace 5, and then move the cursor a little bit to the left before you hit enter, enter, enter. And you'll find one of the solutions is at negative 1 half, which it gives you negative 0.5, but I'm sure that you can turn that back into a decimal yourself. And then if you hit second trace, 5, and then you move the cursor over to close to where it looks like it hits 3, and then hit enter 3 times, it'll tell you it hits at 3 on the nose. So that's how you can also find the solution by using the intersect function. Now, what if I said to you, write it in factored form? You would know one of the solutions is x. This one's going to give me x minus 3. And then this one is going to give you x plus 1 half, but you're going to rewrite it as 2x plus 1, which is exactly the same thing I got factoring the long way. Not all polynomials have all real solutions. In the previous problem, because the biggest exponent, oops, I didn't want to make a smudge, because the biggest exponent was 3, the most amount of times that the graph could hit the x-axis was 3 times, or there are at most 3 real solutions. But we learned when we talked about quadratic equations that sometimes we can get something called imaginary solutions. The only way to determine imaginary solutions is by using the quadratic formula. So first, I am going to set this equation equal to 0. As a matter of fact, I'm going to write it in descending order power. So I should actually write 3x to the 4th minus 6x cubed plus 12x squared equals 0. And then I'm going to find the greatest common factor. Well, I notice they're all divisible by 3, and they're all divisible by x squared, because they all have at least two x's. So when I factor out a 3x squared, I'm left with x squared minus 2x plus 4. But if you go and you try to factor this by hand, it's not going to work, because there are not two numbers that multiply to give you 4, but when you add them, give you 2. So if you can't factor something, the only way to solve it is with the quadratic formula. Now, one of the solutions is going to be 3x squared equals 0. So x squared equals 0. So x is equal to 0. And if you graph this on your graphing calculator, you will see that the graph only hits the x-axis one time, at 0. The other thing I want you to notice about it is, it is a multiplicity of 2, because the shape of the graph at 0 is quadratic. To find the other two solutions, remember this is a multiplicity of two, that means that two of the solutions are zero. But there are four solutions. To find the other two, we're going to use the quadratic formula. So x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So x is equal to negative b is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 4 all over 2 times 1. When we simplify using the quadratic formula, I want you to simplify that. I want you to simplify what's underneath the square root sign, and I believe I'm going to get negative 12, and then simplify this. These are the other two solutions. Now, the book actually simplifies the square root of 12 into 2 to the square root of 3. However, we have not yet reviewed how to simplify radicals. So if you remember how to simplify them, great. If you don't, don't worry about it. What I put in the box is an acceptable answer. Now I want you to work on these problems on your own. 
uh, this first problem here, A, do not multiply it out. It is already in factored form, so all you have to do is the zero product property. B, don't forget to get the equation equal to zero before you factor out the greatest common factor. And trust me, you'll be able to find the greatest common factor. On page 311 is a whole big box on something called polynomial factoring techniques. Most of the stuff is stuff we've already talked about, like factoring out a greatest common factor. Always look for a greatest common factor first before you do anything else. We spent an entire chapter reviewing quadratic trinomials. So how do we factor ax squared plus bx plus c? A lot of times you can just use your graphing calculator to help you. A special type of trinomial was called the perfect square trinomial. And remember, perfect square trinomials were the ones where the last term was a perfect square and the middle term was the sum of those two numbers. And they were very easy to factor. The sign in the parentheses of the factored form had to do with whatever sign was on the middle term. The difference of squares, if you have two perfect squares being subtracted, they always factor into this. Factor by grouping is the factoring method that I use when the uh, coefficient in f of a is something other than 1. Factor by grouping, you have to have four terms, and you group the first two terms together and the next two terms together. The new type of factoring, though, is going to be the sum or difference of cubes. You know, something times itself times itself. If you have two terms that are both the cube of something, and they're being added, they factor into this. And it's... And I'll just give you this definition because right now I don't think it's one that you'll memorize. If you have the difference of two cubes, it factors into this. In other words, you have to know what a and b are by taking the cube root of a number. One of the easiest problems, but students don't recognize it as such, is this problem. I want to find all the solutions, real and imaginary, of x to the fourth minus 3x squared is equal to 4. Well, what did I tell you to do first? Make sure it equals 0. This is a particular type of fourth degree polynomial. Not all fourth degree polynomials look like this. We call this a polynomial in quadratic form. The reason is because doesn't it look like this equation? which if it was, it would be easily factorable. It would factor into x minus 4, x plus 1, because negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, and negative 4 plus 1 is 3. But it, the problem is really x to the fourth. It's very easy to fix that problem. Well, what's the square root of x to the fourth? It's x squared. So really, this is the factored form. What I did was I pretended for a moment that it looked like a quadratic, and I factored it as such. It's just that in factored form, it's not really x minus 4, it's x squared minus 4. Well, now once I reach this point in time, I can use the zero product property to finish solving by setting each of the parentheses equal to 0 and then solving for x. So here, x is going to be plus or minus 2, because you're taking the square root of both sides. Wait a second, I'm taking the square root of negative 1. The square root of negative 1 is 1i. So, a fourth degree polynomial is going to have four solutions, and those four solutions are 2, negative 2, i, and negative i. If you graph this in your calculator, you will only see it hit the x-axis at 2 and negative 2. You would not have known that there were two other solutions. We will do a section where we talk only about real solutions of polynomials, but for right now, we're going to use all the techniques we've been learning since the beginning of the year to help us find all the solutions of a polynomial.
We're going to do one more problem. I'm going to solve x cubed equals 1. First, I'm going to make it equal to 0. Well, this is x times x times x, isn't it? And isn't this 1 times 1 times 1? So this must be the difference of two cubes, where a is x and b is 1. If I look back at the table on page 311, it says that the difference of two cubes factors into a minus b, a squared plus ab plus b squared. So in this case, it's going to be x minus 1 because a is x and b is 1. x squared plus 1x plus 1 squared, which is 1. All right, so that's my factored form. Now, the thing about the sum or difference of two trinomials is that only one of the factors is going to result in a real solution. The other one, you're going to have to use the quadratic formula to solve. So, x minus 1 equals 0, x equals 1. I claim to you that if you graph x cubed minus 1 in your calculator, you will only see it hit the x-axis one time. It'll hit it 1. So, to find the other two solutions, which must be imaginary, we're going to use the quadratic formula. x equals the opposite of b is 1. Remember, it's 1, not 1x. Plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I'm going to simplify this. I'm going to simplify what's under the square root sign, which is going to give me negative 3. And I'm going to simpl simplify this. And there's only one other thing I have to do, which is take out the i, because I can't take the square root of 3. So here are the other two solutions. So my solutions are x equals 1, and the other two are negative 1, plus or minus i squared of 3 over 2. These are the three problems I'd like you to try on your own. C is like problem 2A that I had just done. B, get it equal to 0 and then take out a greatest common factor. You may still have to use the quadratic formula. You may not. I don't know. A, I'm going to give you a little hint on. Once you set it equal to 0, pretend pretend it says this, because if it does, it factors into x plus 4, x minus 4, except that it really wasn't a quadratic, it was actually a quartic. Now you can finish using the zero product property and find all four solutions.